Hello again, I am Blunty, and these two things are camera lenses. Duh. The little one is the Pentax 06 telephoto zoom lens for Q series cameras. The other one is a Tamron 70 to 300 millimeter SP. It weighs about 750 grams. The Pentax weighs about 90 grams. The Pentax one can fit in my pocket, even with the camera attached. The Tamron, well, not so much. But the fun thing is, and the reason I'm making this slightly ridiculous comparison, is both these lenses are almost identical in the focal lengths they cover. The Pentax 06 goes from 15mm to 45mm, and in the full frame terms, the field of view delivered to the sensor is just on 83mm to 249mm, thanks to the 55 times crop factor of the Pentax Q's compact sensor. It's brand new and it finally fills the telephoto hole that was so conspicuous in the Pentax Q's lens lineup. And the news only gets better. This telephoto lens is highly engineered. It's got a constant f2.8 aperture, which, if you're a photography newbie out there, I ain't gonna teach you what it means exactly. This is a review, not Blunty teaches newbies stuff. So just accept the fact that it's a very nice thing for a lens to do. Physically speaking, it's got a nice big grippy ring for the zoom operation and it's relatively smooth in operation. It's got a locking position to collapse the lens right down to an even smaller size when not in use and a focus ring that sits out there on the front and well, I don't like that part so much if I'm honest. It's too small, it's too close to the zoom ring so I often accidentally move it triggering the zoom magnification mode I've got set on the camera which is super annoying and frankly it doesn't feel very well built. There's a fair bit of play in it and wibble and wobble and such but on the bright side it works wonderfully well. Manual focus is quite simple indeed, responsive, accurate, easy so you know not too bad all up. Now, aside from the focus ring, in general, the build quality is pretty okay. It's still a bit plasticky, but all the Q lenses are, and none of them have ever skipped a beat on me so far. My Zero Two Zoom looks a little more beat up, but it's only cosmetic damage. It still works perfectly. Back on the Zero Six, autofocus is relatively nippy. It's not what I'd call fast, but it's within the acceptable average for lenses of around these focal lengths. Now then, it's time I keep rambling on about my experiences of actually shooting with the 06 out in the real world over the last week or so while I show you what I managed to squeeze out of the mighty midget. So, right off the bat, one of the major advantages to having a constant f2.8 aperture on a lens at these focal lengths means that even with a camera sporting a sensor as comparatively small as the one inside my trusty Pentax Q, is that you can more easily isolate your subject using a shallow depth of field. And better yet, the 06 lens does that with a particularly pleasant aesthetic. The bokeh of the background blur is smooth even, and point light sources generate lovely, perfectly round bokeh balls. Basically, all the lovely things that those who worship at the altar of bokeh like to see. Well, that and scrawny English goobers prancing around Hong Kong shouting things like BOKEHLICIOUS! Also characteristic of the queue, there's a little bit of texture in that bokeh, some very fine grain that I think gives it a slightly filmic look. And of course, a fast lens like this makes shooting in dim conditions much easier. Sharpness of the in-focus areas is fairly crispy too. When shot wide open, it can get slightly soft. Not severely so, but if we slide through some punched-in comparisons with the center and corners, you can certainly spot a difference. I found it sharpest at about f4, but honestly, only the most irritatingly anal of pixel-peeping photo forum sackbiters will even care. The Pentax has never been about shooting at possibly sharp images for printing on 10-foot-tall billboards. That's, that's ridiculous. The cue is about having fun, experimenting, letting your creativity wander, being a photographer at play. That's what it exists for. That's what it's great at. So, even with that slight softness, I still think it pulls in plenty of detail, and so I found myself shooting wide open almost all of the time anyway, and I was having a blast with it, to be honest. Colour, contrast, and tone were all spot on with the best of the Q's other lenses, even the Zero One Prime. And the happy news kept rolling in as when I went looking for it, there was very little sign of things like chromatic aberrations and other such artifacts. There were two things I found the Zero Six lens particularly nifty for. The first is street shooting. Now, I know most street shooter religionists will swear by a wide-angle lens, so you get lots of the environment in around your subject, and they'll go on about how it forces you to get into the intimate spaces of people and bring the viewer into the scene and blah, blah, blah. But 
there's another school of thought, and it's just as valid, and that's using a longer lens to get in tight, compress the scene for a more intimate feeling portrait, one that's not being interrupted or altered by your presence as a photographer. It's here where you catch the more naturalistic moment, the authentic emotions. But that street shooting philosophical debate aside, the second thing this lens is especially useful for is rather obvious. Wildlife! It's here where you really need those longer focal lengths to get in close to a wild animal without scaring it off or otherwise disturbing its behaviour. The f2.8 aperture at these focal lengths on this sensor is absolutely perfect for getting the entire animal in perfect focus and pleasant clear detail and throwing the background clutter gently out of focus just enough to nicely isolate the animal but not so much as to remove the context of the environment. Plus the fact that the Pentax Q is small, subtle, unobtrusive, easy to handle and very quiet in operation all work for you very effectively here. It's a damn near perfect pairing actually and thanks again to the diminutive size it means wildlife shooters can always have it with them and handy unlike the monstrously heavy and bulky lenses like the comparison we started out this video with. I'm not even remotely suggesting that many if any wildlife shooters will surrender their big cameras and pricey glass for this little pairing but as a backup or as a camera to have with you when you're not carrying your big expensive heavy gear well it's great I mean look at this stuff. And all of these things hold just as true for video, of course. Truth be told, I don't use my Q much for video. For me, it's been a stills tool for two reasons. The first is, well, it's a stills camera by design, and when I shove the little bugger into my bag, it's for stills, so I can refresh my photographer's eye to play, to find inspiration again. Sometimes that does mean shooting a little video project or two, but not nearly as often. The second reason is that the video mode on the Q is relatively limited anyway, but the 06 lens may change how often I flip over to that video mode. I certainly found myself shooting far more video than I usually do with the Q, and more than I'd even planned on during the testing for this review. Because of the focal length in video, you do want to have the anti-shake feature turned on. In my original review of the camera body, I recommended you leave this off, as the stabilization built into the Pentax Q can get a bit screwy at times, and it isn't very advanced by today's standards, especially not measured up against the bests like Sony and Olympus's OMD EM5, for example. But it does certainly help out significantly here when you're hand holding video at the long end of the focal length range that this lens offers up. But all that said, the lens itself performs brilliantly for video. The aesthetic is lovely and thanks to the unusually fast aperture at these long focal lengths, that shallow depth of field gives the video coming out of it the impression of a much larger censored camera. I showed some of these shots to a camera savvy pal of mine without telling him what I shot it on and he thought it was shot from my Canon 60D DSLR. That was interesting. And of course, a quick lens makes shooting video in low light much more practical too, and gives you lots of pretty, perfectly round bokeh balls in those point light sources. The manual focus ability is nice and smooth for doing manual focus pulls, even if it is a bit awkward because of the size of the focus rings. And of course, the ability to keep to the low and mid ISO ranges to keep noise at the subtle end. All of these things were wonderful gifts delivered by the little black and grey tube of glass. So, all up. If you've got yourself a Pentax Q, or are thinking about the new Pentax Q10, which is hitting Aussie shores soon, so keep an eye out for the review, Q fans. Well, to put it simply, you absolutely want to add the 06 lens to your collection. It fills a hole in the lineup that was achingly open, and get this, Pentax only want 239 Aussie dollars for it. Bargain! I am absolutely adding this lens to my personal collection. It's friggin' brilliant to have a lens like this on a camera body like this and being able to stuff the whole shebang into the pocket of my hoodie. Can't do that with the trusty Tamron telephoto slapped onto my comparatively colossal Canon. I'd look like a lunatic for even trying. And if you've already got the 02 zoom lens, the 06 of course takes off right from where it stops. So in just two little lenses, you've got an uninterrupted range of focal lengths all the way from the wide angle of 28mm equivalent all the way through to the telephoto end of 250mm. And that's just, that's just groovy. 
So, thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time. Oh, and for those of you who watch these reviews, not necessarily for the product advice, but for my snapshots and gibbering photographic enthusiasm, feel free to leave the time index of your favorite shot down there in the comment section. Personally, I kind of like this flirty-looking parrot. It kind of makes me smile. Or the feisty finch. That was a tough shot to get, so I really like that one and how it came out. All these street shots. Oh, God, I can't decide which one I like best.